We all fight with the low material availability on the market. In the today's show, we're going to show you how automation and software will make your life easier. See you in the show. Yes, software is the ultimate automation tool. And did you know that many manufacturers are looking for more software engineers than production workers? Welcome to the show. We are talking today about software and you will see many other use cases besides that one explained by Matthias. But before we start, if you are interested in automation technology or you are interested in technology for electronics manufacturing, please hit the subscription button. And one more thing, you will find a white paper for today's topic in our library for, for the Facts on Open Automation Show white papers. One more thing you may have spotted is our brand new logo behind me. More about it you will find on our website. Our guests today are Haitem Iridi. Hello. Hi, Laszlo. And Matthias Hens. Hello, Matthias. Hi, Laszlo. So we are talking about software, Heidi, and in our last show we talked about uh, data and actionable information. So how to convert that into money? Yes, so we learned about the impact of data in the production, which is um, actually done by some um, integrated information from the machines itself. And of course it's very important to mirror this one in the production by um, increasing the efficiency, for example. Uh, and this is done, of course, uh, by automation. But uh, again, automation is not only related to robots or EIVs. It's also, of course, related to um, automate any kind of workflows by just using software. By just so, just like on a mobile phone, automating your, your day. Yeah. Now, in our case, in on an SMT shop floor, we have many different jobs. Does it mean that the software can replace a complete job? Actually, we still need um, many tasks to which need to be done by operators. So we're talking about automation means we start, of course, by repetitive or tasks which need to be repeated again and again. And um, here, of course, we can take these kind of tasks and automate them by software. So the software will have a big impact of any tasks which can be repeated. And operators in this case um, don't need to, to just take care about such kind of um, tasks, so all of these automated tasks will be done uh, then in the background and um, spend more time for all other tasks which can be done, for example, manually by such operators. Good. You mentioned at the beginning that software may have a little cost, but it can also be a significant cost. Anyway, uh, anyone who wants to invest in it needs to justify it. What could be benefits of software which you could use in your justification? Um, this is a good question since we need, of course, to uh, first of all um, try to invest in software to uh, figure out which return of invest we, we do have. Um, sometimes it's even just by um, enabling um, data coming from the equipment by sensors, for example, and here we have some, some figures for you uh, by, by uh, some examples to, for example, even um, using um, such, such, such kind of um, sensors in the production will bring the intelligence to the machines. And we can then um, um, even increase the um, uh, utilizations up to uh, 15% in, in the factory itself. Um, other examples, for example, even if it comes to the maintenance itself, so by mm -hmm. enabling um, IoT sensor technologies in the factory itself, we can also here have some um, um, productive and uh, preventive uh, maintenance results um, analyzed in some software. Again, some software which then can reduce uh, the maintenance costs down to 40%. Good. Shop floor in electronics manufacturing. What software do we suggest here? Yeah, that's also a good question. I think um, if you compare um, your factories and the shop floors in general, um, uh, these also in some um, statistics more than 150 software which can be used operating different systems in the shop floor. Right. And uh, here we're talking about um, a simple suite ASM uh, PT is offering for you 
to just uh, use any kind of, uh, let me say, workflow softwares you need by just one uh, platform, which is Works. And uh, I prepared for you also a video for uh, about Works, which is uh, our um, shop floor management tool. So that's what we are watching now. Yes. For the digital transformation toward the integrated smart factory, high-performance software solutions are just as important as the hardware. If there is no support from fully integrated and connected software solutions covering all workflows, the benefits of even the most state-of-the-art production machines remain far below their potential. With the goal of making the seamless integration of software easier, faster, future-proof and more cost-efficient, we are now consolidating the award-winning ASMPT software solutions into a powerful smart shop floor management suite. Works Works software enables you to quickly and easily set up the software infrastructure for smart, integrated electronics manufacturing without having to worry about interfaces, compatibility or data transfer. Designed for use with smart ASMPT equipment, Works supports the tasks of all people or roles on the factory floor. The results? Optimized production workflows for top overall equipment effectiveness, more efficient personnel deployment, process improvements through workflow automation and transparency across the entire shop floor through optimized data utilization and communication. Works Smart Shop Floor Management Suite. Fast, easy, investment and future-proof. That was a basic overview about works. Matthias, planning is your Steckenpferd, as it is said here in Germany. So, and it's an important workflow, so it's your yes, hobby. Yes. So how did uh, works change the life of a planner? Yeah, Lasso, you have to see still in today's time, planning is a very complex uh, process and therefore in very, very often in companies still a manual process where you need a lot of experience. And due to this, it's very hard to run updates, changes, and this is exactly going to be changed with works. How are we going to do this? I've prepared some videos for, today, for you today. And uh, if you are ready, guys, we would start with the first video about the import of production data from ERP and SAP systems and the optimization of the optimal production sequence. Importing ERP data into a production planning system can be a major challenge in some electronics factories. Not so with Works. Because the Works planning application supports you in importing any CSV files easily and flexibly into your planning scenario. Here I show you how easy it is to transfer CSV files from your ERP system to our planning software. With the import, we take all the relevant information from the ERP system to select the required placement recipes. Once the data is imported, you can easily optimize your production planning. The result, an optimized production plan for two lines. And now you can get started. This is the optimized production plan for the two lines. It can now be released and started. This is how flexible and easy it is to import ERP data, reuse it and optimize it in a further step. That looks good. So it's fully automated. But Matthias, what about flexibility? What if I have some changes? Yeah, flexibility is a quite important uh, topic. Yeah, we, know, we all know the situation, the components don't arrive in time. And uh, due to that, you have to change your planning quite often. And in the next video, I'm going to show how Works will support you to react on this issue quite fast and flexible. Let's check it out. Maintaining a production plan is always a challenge for every production planner. This makes it even more important to have a tool like Works that makes it easy to edit any production plan. With this planning module, the only thing we have to do is click on Edit Plan and then select a specific board or recipe. Here I click on an NPI board that I need to move forward in the planning, for example, because the required process engineer is not available at the originally suggested time. It immediately shows me all the available time slots to which I can move the board. The only thing I have to do now is to move the board to a later time and insert it there. I can also see all the consequences of this change. 
Here it fits perfectly, and I was able to solve my planning challenge quite easily by moving the board to a later time slot. That's how easy and flexible it can be to edit the production plan in your factory. That looks fine. Good. Even a manual change cannot go wrong, Matthias. That's right. But Laszlo, we still have to check one manual task in this workflow. What manual task? After the planning, we have to transfer our planning or new updates to the production lines. Mm -hmm. And without, be, uh, without being connected to the production lines, you have to do this still manually. And therefore, you would lose a lot of worthful time. And so once this last step is done, your planning is done. Then the job is done. So how long did it take? In general or in average, I would say not longer than half an hour. So this is quite short, yes. That's very short. So even I could do the planning as a newbie. <laughs> Tough question, but I think yes. <laughs> Fantastic. So Matthias, that was a partial solution for a current problem, component shortage. Mm -hmm. So that could be one way how to solve this it's problem. It's one way, yes. Do you have another current problem which you could partially solve or help our viewers? Yeah, there's also another issue in today's time. Yeah, you see the order books are full, mm -hmm. um, but uh, some of our customers are fighting to get operators for this demand. And uh, I, I do have a tip for you or for you, uh, how you can improve the time or you gain time for your operators. Let's check it out. As you can see here, the real replenishment process is one of the main manual work that operator has to do at the line. To do this, to refill the empty running reels, the operator needs to get the material first out of the stock. And this time is offline. That means the operator is not present at the line. After getting all of the material, for sure, also the operator has to bring back the material back to the line. And again, during this time, the operator is not available at the line. And exactly here, there can be a high risk of line downtime. Because something can happen and then the line will stop. And we all know how expensive can be one hour of line downtime. And this is exactly where we can help and support with open automation. That means by software controlled hardware, for example, a material tower that you also see here behind me, we can get automatically the material uh, supplied from the system. That means the manual process, we're gonna move to an automated process because the operator can already start by uh, sending the request from the line to the stock and then he will get automatically his material out of the stock. In addition, we can also minimize the time that the operator needs to bring the material back to the line. And also here, we're gonna move the manual work to an automated process. And this is exactly what we want to achieve. First, we want to achieve that we have less manual work that the operator has to do, and we want to reduce the risk of line downtime. Two, gain worthful operator time. Cool thing, that tower. And just because we have seen it beside you and you mentioned it, can you tell us some spec details about it? Sure, I can give you more information about it. The tower itself does have a storage capacity of up to 906 seven inch wheels. And uh, you can put the, uh, many uh, towers together in a cluster by still having only one pickup point. Optionally, you can equip the tower with MSD option. Or what you also can do, you can use the tower in combination with ARVs. Fantastic. Heidi, we talked about software works. How much works do I need? Who, who is giving me advice? Um, we do have different solutions. And uh, works is um, scalable and modular. It means uh, depending on your need, actually, you can have as much works as you need. Um, starting, of course, from some examples Matthias mentioned about logistics, how to improve, of course, the material management up to the 
the planning, which is one of the first steps, um, this is something we can discuss together with customer and with you to just define, for example, the first steps, priority of such kind of solutions, and then define together which um, part of works uh, you should implement first. Did you define it also with Alessandro Bonara? Yes, we did. One of our first victims, actually, but uh, at least we uh, detect also here in the production um, workflows, which are going very well. And uh, thanks to works, we can even um, improve a little bit. Yes, thank you. So, Alessandro Bonava, for all of you who don't know, is the head of our production. We produce all, all, all of our boards for our equipment by ourselves. And we visited Alessandro Bonara to ask how much works he uses. Hi, Alessandro. Hi, Lazzo. Do you use works in your production? Yes, of course. So, as I said in the previous show, so we are using best in class equipment. And uh, to get the maximum performance out of them, we need uh, so the best fitting software. We talk in our show about standard use cases in the production. Can you tell us some specific use cases in your production for our yes. audience? Yes, definitely. So we, have, we are using us from the works packages, we are using the material management. And in our case here, we are using the material management in combination with the Modi table. Mm -hmm. Modi table? What is a Modi table? Modi table is, a, is a, actually as a table as a, with integrated scanner. And uh, we are scanning also the, um, the reel and the material from coming from the manufacturer. And automatically, uh, we recognize also the material, um, the material name, and so on. And we can also define also the unique ID and the material number of what we're using then later on in our machine. So why are you doing this? What is the benefit? The benefit is uh, really on hand. So you have uh, first of all, so you avoid as a possible uh, tipping error uh, from uh, from one reel to the new for this this for the manufacturer to our software. The second point, so you, um, you have a traceability, because so you have a picture, you have a, and you have a unique ID on that, and uh, you save time. Fantastic. Cool solution. Yes. I can show you, if you want. Yes, please. You have a reel here, and you have a number, serial number for manufacturer, for and then as you can uh, put on the top, and then we scan. And then we say, okay, here we have two possibilities. And we say, okay, it's this or the second one. Yes. And we say, okay. Ah, and it's and automatic. automatically. Automatically we have this. And now in case also we have uh, traceability topics, we can take this one and we put it together. And now we have a combination. It scan also these two number, and then we have a combination together. And this now is a transfer to our manufacturer, to our material manager. Fantastic, cool. Yes, if you want, so I have something else also to see. Even more, please. Of course, come with me, come with me. We are here in the setup area. We are preparing here the new setup, or we are building the, so the setup so for, for the machine. And what we have here is uh, like so our Modi table is a X-ray counting machine also for the component, for the reel. And this is connected also with our works system also with the material management tool. How it's working is actually with, uh, when we are get back also this setup, back also from the production, mm -hmm. we have also to take the used reel out and count how many components do we have really there and check it is really combined as what we have in our, our material manager. We take also the reel that we dismounted also from the feeder and uh, so we check uh, so with a unique ID that we placed as uh, so before in the previous, previous process. We are scanning this, we put in this, and we start in. In this case, now it's starting as uh, the cycle and with the X-ray. Oh, it was fast. Yes, quite fast. And now it's counting. This is a, we have a same as uh, like a camera. We are counting the component uh, on that. And they say, if I say, okay, now this number is actually the number that we are going as a two place in oh, our material it's manager. Rebooked. Oh, so no error possible. Oh, let's say like this. So we have uh, a good software. We have very good software and very good equipment as in order to avoid possible human error. But 
uh, as experience say that actually human are much more inventive and innovative for new era. Say, create a new one. Thanks, Alessandro. Always a pleasure to visit you. Every time welcome. Thank you very much. Alessandro's use cases for material management. IT, that was also a nice example how software works with third-party equipment. Uh, yes, um, for sure we, we need to integrate third parties also. Nevertheless, um, Works is actually made for our ASMPT solutions, um, to be um, clear also here at that point, uh, but integration is a must, and that's why, we, why we're talking about open automation, to be open to integrate any third-party um, machines or systems. Thanks, Heidi. We always want to cover in this show also the voices of other regions because we, of course, are here in Europe. And this time we want to cover the voice of the US. And therefore, I have invited Mark Ockton, senior, senior regional manager of marketing in the US. Hello, Mark. Hello, Laszlo. How are you doing today? Mark, uh, is there even uh, electronics manufacturing in the US? A good question, Laszlo. Yes, of course. There's still a lot of electronics manufacturing in the United States and, in fact, all over the Americas, especially high-value products that uh, require, require a lot of customer service, a lot of um, uh, customization. So we still have a lot of this um, high-value manufacturing in automotive, large servers, things of that nature. Now, we talk today in this show about software, and I have read in an article that especially the US is a country which uses heavily software for decision-making. How is it in US manufacturing? Yes, Laszlo, that's a very important topic here in the United States. Uh, right now, we find ourselves in a situation where it's difficult to recruit employees, especially operators. Um, it is challenging to train them and to retain them in their job. Um, and for that reason, many manufacturers are looking to further automate their factories. So they rely less on the skill and knowledge of an operator and more on a system that can design and guide the operator's tasks for them. And um, that is something that we're seeing much more of now in the United States, um, enables an a customer to basically run their factory without relying so much on human knowledge. Uh, absolutely, and that was also a similar example like Matthias told us before. What about open automation, about open automation in itself? What is the voice of the US market about it? Well, it's certainly a topic that's very important because, as I mentioned, we have um, a problem with retaining and training employees. Open automation would allow a customer to take some of the process steps that are done manually now and reduce the dependency on a human operator and also speed up the process. I'll give you an example. Um, one um, of my colleagues uh, did a little study about material movements in a factory. And we calculated on average that it takes three minutes for a US operator to find and pick a piece of material, for example, a reel of components. But it then takes them another seven minutes to take that partially used reel of components, count it, and put it back in the warehouse. So that is a lot of human intervention, just to move material from your warehouse to the shop floor and then return it again once it's been used. If we can automate that with processes that are supported by our tools like Command Center or Material Manager, it's going to greatly improve our customers' efficiency and it will reduce their dependence on employees' knowledge. So how can then you help U.S. customers in, in, in regard to open automation? Well, we have a fully staffed organization here based uh, just outside beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, that you can see in the background here. Um, our center of competence is available for customers to look at the different product offerings we have. We offer many different tools, just as we do globally. We offer operator guidance in the form of command center that will guide an operator to perform the tasks they need to in the correct order to keep production running. We have our material management system 
that will help um, operators find and locate the materials they need and bring it to the shop floor quicker. And of course, we have expertise in integration and applications engineering that can help integrate and automate other parties, third party equipment into our system. So basically we're fully equipped to um, use open automation to help our customers make that next step um, in becoming more efficient. Also, Mark, thanks for joining and thanks for, uh, for your expertise. Thank you, Laszlo. Goodbye. Thanks. Goodbye. So last but not least, so this was our show about how to open automate with software. I have, as always, some final recommendations for you. If you want to see us live, we are live at following events, which you see down there in the ticker. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Also, please do not forget to download the white paper out of our library for uh, these facts on Open Automation Show. And another tip, book a remote demo for any product you want to see. You, we organize you a customized online demonstration. That was all, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for thank your you expertise. Lester. Thanks, Matthias. Thanks, Lasso. Also, thank you for joining. Have a nice day and stay open. <laughs>